Festi fam, the time is now. Festival goers unite. Welcome to the Festi Files podcast, where we highlight the creative and inspiring people who collectively come together and create the festival experience. So if you're watching this at home and you attend music festivals, you are someone that brings this experience to life. If you are someone that dances on the stage, you dance in the crowd. If you go to events and trade candy, we all play an integral and an important piece of the puzzle in which uh, we call the music festival experience. My name is Desmond Beristain, and I am the CEO and founder of, and move my little candy out the way, shout out to Porter Robinson, but I'm the founder of Bestie, the festival smart band. And today, really fun, you know, we're getting nice and festive and it feels good to have candy on right now because, you know, not being able to physically attend festivals, but we're keeping the spirit alive and that's what we all have to do. Today I have someone who is a custom perler and face mask artist. She, she's an amazing artist. I mean, we're going to get more into her story right now. She loves music festivals. She's actively moving the culture forward. And I say that because if you're attending events, if you're, you know, building relationships and you're, you know, rocking the coolest candy and, and not only yourself, you're giving it away and you're sharing it with other people. Like that's literally the essence of music festivals. So, so ladies and gentlemen, we have the candy addict <laughs> herself, yeah. Erica Huerta. <laughs> Erica, candy addict, thanks for joining the festival. Hey, everyone. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Yeah. It's exciting. <laughs> we had to have you on. Like, my basically, you know, Aaron Sriracha Man, he texted me. He's like, yo, you got you to gotta have the candy addict on. She just really killing the game. Yeah. And then I was like, yo, let me check out her IG. And then I just, like, literally saw the type of candy you were creating and the energy that you're passing on to other people. And that's literally, like, what we need you know, right now, even though, like I said, we can't physically be at festivals, like that spirit alone, like, let's talk about that. What, what got you into, you know, making your own candy, let alone, you know, just the, the festival community and, and how that just goes perfectly hand in hand. Absolutely. Well, uh, my story started when I was a teenager, actually, um, in middle school, um, circa 2000, I don't even know, <laughs> but it was like when, like, um, like gloving and shuffling really took off and um like my school was really inspired by that kind of stuff and um all like everyone in middle school would like wear like singles like up to their like to, to their elbows and I thought that was really cool and I, I jumped in on that and I really liked the music so um I started creating my own things and um I started uh I learned how to glove too I was about um maybe 13 wow 13, 13 or so, and it was just singles, little peyote stitches and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> you know, eventually you kind of figure out you can't get into these events. So I eventually drifted away from that a little bit and uh, I got reintroduced to it um, in 2015. I went to my first real like big festival. And then in like uh, 2017, um, I went to my first insomniac event which was uh, Beyond Wonderland. Nice. And by then I started um, following a bunch of candy kids on Instagram and I, they really inspired me. And I was just like, wow, this is really cool. So I just started making little stuff and I've always been a really creative person. Uh, I love making things. I look, I, you know, I used to draw when I was younger and just anything I can make, I, I really enjoyed. So kind of, you know, it took off from there. Yeah. especially with the whole Instagram thing the whole like community is so big and it's like we're so tight-knit and like everyone knows each other and like it's really great yeah that's awesome mm -hmm. and, and that's cool so you mentioned Beyond Wonderland 2017 yeah. and I'll share a story because it's right. funny we're already see we're already connected Festy started our first the first time we ever made a prototype of Festy and we're like all right we got to go test it at a festival and run around the festival and try to find each other yeah. was beyond wonderland 2017 like that same exact year <laughs> when we were i think um uh elenium was one of the headliners i believe yeah. that year yeah yeah and we were oh, running yeah. around the that. parking lot talking to people and then going in and that was a, an amazing amazing festival and that's cool so we're, we're connected that way yeah maybe um, we saw each other running around we didn't even know it <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. we probably you know we, we crossed our paths and um we were there we met Plur Rabbit. We were with Plur Rabbit, and then that's yeah. the first time I met Plur okay. Rabbit. Um, 
So yeah, let's talk about the culture and how, you know, it, it, it's, di- it's so cool that you can become well known because of like your energy and, and, and then people just loving like what you're wearing. Talk about that. Cause you have like so much gear on. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's one of my favorite pieces. Hey, right Seven Lions. Shout yeah, out I to love Seven, Seven Lions. Lions. Seven Lions is my favorite DJ. I love uh, hard style. I love hard dance. Nice. I like the stuff. <laughs> I got uh, Dream State. I love Dream State. Yes. My favorite festival. Yeah. I, yeah, I feel like um, it, it. You're already doing one thing that we should all be doing. Like, we're we're having to stay at home, you know, and, and that's a little bummer. But you, just by looking at your room, it's like, oh, you're still at the festival. <laughs> oh yeah, at room. Kind of way, yeah, like staying in touch. I have a little DJ set up here, a little bit of candy, oh, awesome. and yeah. just, and a little disco ball, and just like, <clears throat> keeps those vibes going. So, what have you seen? you know, throughout the community during the, the quarantine time that kind of makes you smile and gives you a lot of hope for the future of festivals? I think um, our community is a lot more kind of tight knit than I thought, especially with like all the streams and like everyone, like I don't see any other community come together in the way that we have. Mm-hmm. So just, you know, you know, we're all still talking. We're all still, you know, we video chat and watch the streams together, you know, and, the artists are really like doing their doing their part, you know, doing weekly yeah. streams and all that. So, I just think that's that's you know, that's really cool. And obviously, it's like really important to stay stay creative right now. You know, yeah. have fun with the time that we have. You know, we don't get this um this opportunity. It's and like under the circumstances, obviously, it's like it sucks. But we have this time to ourselves, and you know, it's important to just kind of focus on the important things. Yeah, you, you said it. Like, I love that you used the word opportunity because that alone shows that you're like, yeah, we are stuck at home. Yeah, it might be a bummer, but it's also a chance for me to make more candy or listen to sets and, and, and reach out to my friends. Like, maybe because we live in such a fast paced world that yeah. us slowing down right now, we can kind of reassess what matters. And, and one thing I've been trying to just really push is you know, as a community, we should look at, all right, well, how can we make the festival experience better? And, and it could start with like, all right, you know, when I go to, back to festivals, I'm just going to be more appreciative of everything that's going on. If I see somebody wearing some cool candy, I'm going to let them know like, hey, I think that your outfit or whatever you're rocking, like, that's really cool. I'm going to throw away my trash, you know, just like so that I'm not dancing, you know, I can't be doing my hard style and then I'm, and then I'm stepping on trash. So just yeah. like little things we can do. And we don't have to wait till festivals reopen to start working on that, you know? So, yeah, um, and then, then like you mentioned, like jumping online and, and just like commenting on, on people's stuff on Instagram and just reaching out to friends. Cause if you're the truth of the matter is like, it is tough and it's tough and sometimes depressing and days go like this. But if you're having a, a good day, reach out because someone else might not be having the, the, the greatest of day. And, and that text or that message or that phone call literally can lift their spirit and, um, you know, change the whole rest of their energy for that day. So talk about how, how that in the peace, love, unity, respect, plur community, um, talk about that, like, like trading candy with someone and, and that exchange of energy and why it's so important to you. Okay. Um, well, for me, it's like candy is so much more than just like, you know, little beads. Um, you know, when I make something or when I prep for an event or let's say more, usually the circumstances, I pre-make something f- like uh, in, in an intention for like a specific person, you know, so I customize whatever it may be to that person. And usually I, you know, I know this person pretty well, so I like to you know, my, my big thing is with candy is I don't like to make anything when I'm not in a good mood or when I'm just not feeling it. Like, I think it's very important to put that positive energy in whatever you're doing, you know, cause I, when, when you do give, uh, you know, you trade candy with someone, I do feel like they feel your energy, they feel your intention with it. So even if it's like a big piece or like, like a very like like a single or anything you know there's been like circumstances where like you see someone not having such a great time and you know you know that stuff happens like that at festivals and I think like a little kind of like a 
kind of like a token. It's like a yeah. token of your appreciation of them and what or we all stand for at the end of the day. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you said you said it and the energy thing, like I'll grab mm -hmm. I have this little tropical Pooh Bear and when I look at it, I remember like the person giving it to me and being at an Elenium set and at EDC and just like how it made me feel and I, yeah. still to this day like I look at it and I smile you know and it's it's cool and you just mentioned that it's that energy exchange mm -hmm. um talk about the process do you, and then you also mentioned like even making candy you oh, yeah. take your time and you have to make sure that your energy is right right mm -hmm. because you're like well I want to make sure I'm feeling good because that literally is going to be transferred to the next person talk about how do you make candy like and, and especially like <laughs> the thing that I saw was it wasn't just a simple uh, bead. I'm, I mean, now we're seeing, you know, the, the, the super pearlers, the masks, the even the light up stuff. Like, let's talk about that and how, how does that even, how are you even able to make that stuff? Just my process, you know? <laughs> it all starts with an idea. Uh, sometimes an idea just kind of sticks behind in the back of my head and it just kind of stays there and it kind of keeps building up to this bigger piece and bigger piece and oh, I want it to, you know, be 3D and I want it to light up and, you know, it eventually becomes this big process but um i usually stick to perlers i do perlers like these cups um they were given to me um i i'm not really good with pony beads <laughs> mm -hmm. but uh i really like designing perlers which are these and um <clears throat> so i like to custom make my own stuff like these designs so i have a program on my computer and i can go ahead and you know yeah, you know, tweak anything that I want and then from there I just put it on the board and anything the only thing I do on the board is just the color I really like using colors and mixing them and I like to see them blend but um after that you know it's just the creative process and you know getting it getting it down and you know do everything after that <laughs> how long does it take to like make that amazing the seven lines customized perler um it it really depends like this one's made out of mini beads this mm -hmm. one's like one of my favorite ones i've ever made this one's made out of mini beads this one was <laughs> this one took a whole day it was probably like 13 hours or something like that wow yeah but um Looks something like this which is like regular is this one like this itself was probably like an hour what? and these are from like mini beads so this was probably like um you know another hour it's just kind of like kind of it's like a big puzzle you just kind of put everything together yeah i actually i thought you were gonna say like this took months and <laughs> when you're saying like hours i'm like oh what it actually can be done pretty in yeah. a pretty, pretty reasonable amount of time um for anyone at home right and the whole reason about this podcast as well is we want to incorporate all different types of festival goers so like let's say i'm at home and i i've never even worn candy before i don't even know what candy is Let's do a crash course on what candy is, the different type, types of candy, um, what's a perler, what a, what a cuff is, and then you even have some on your knuckles. Just give us a quick little rundown. What uh, Welcome to Candy World. Okay. Well, welcome to Candy World. <laughs> All right. Here's your basic candies or your singles. Uh, I'm not worrying any right now, but I got to here, like, just a simple bracelet. You know, it's probably, like, the easiest thing to do, you know, I love making singles, just a bunch of them, and, you know, give them out, they're like, just a little quick thing, so that's your single, then you got your cuffs, which are like a multi-stitch, they can be little ones like this, or they can be bigger ones like this, wow. they have a bunch of layers, you can make them light up, you can make them, you know, simple or super unique, you know, have cuffs that are like, you know, it's like little one X's, like this, and I have like cuffs that like, the size of my head like <laughs> you can make them any size basically it depends how you know how, how you want to go you can add like um you can add perlers to them you can add charms to them you can add pendants i've seen like uh, like this one's like a more intricate one with like little like there's like jewelry kind of beads mm -hmm. making it like more fancy more, more like, kind of elegant and then uh you have your perlers sure my my specialty i love making perlers so yeah <clears throat> and those you you basically just put um you get boards you put beads on the boards after you make your design you just iron it with a uh, parchment paper 
And uh, um, these are, I just started experimenting with these uh, last year. Oh, cool. I call them like candy knuckles and they're just little, a little accessory. I don't know if you can, that's a drink state. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just a little, little, little accessory that I like to do. Kind of touches, like kind of finishes up the outfit, <laughs> if you may. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, awesome. That's pretty much, yeah, I see there's so much to it. And then you mentioned like making them light up. How do you make them light up? Because I've seen people with like, I'm like, whoa, that's like real life yeah. transformer type gear on and I want one. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if you can, this one's lighting up right now. Yeah. Um, for perlers, I use um, fairy lights or string lights and they come with these tiny uh, battery packs right here. Cool. And it's nice because they're not bulky. They're not heavy. Um, and you just glue them down with hot glue. Um, I get this question a lot. So on my Instagram, I actually have a link in my bio, and it's an Amazon list to every everything that I use, every type of light that I use. You know, to little lights, to like bigger like um, lights with that use like um, AA batteries and stuff like that. It just depends like what your needs are and how extra you want to be, basically. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. And then, do you have any masks? Because it's funny, like. Well, not really funny, but when this all started happening and then masks were selling out and I'm here thinking about the festival <laughs> culture, I was like, we got masks, like we got the coolest masks, yeah. <laughs> and, 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 you know? So like we kind of first on that too, with the li had the live streams going on, had already custom masks being made. Uh, are you getting yeah. a lot of mask orders right now? Um, I've had like a, a question, but um, I don't really sell candy, but um I think like stuff like little singles, I, I don't know. It's very controversial. Um, but I feel like if you put your heart into like a big piece, like something really intricate, that's not like, oh, just like anyone can like, just kind of, you know, make, I think that's, that's okay to me, especially if it's like something you don't want. And, you know, not all of us can do it. It's not for everybody, but you sometimes you want it, you know? So um, I've had just like, some, like one person asked me, you know, um, but other than that, <laughs> that, that's that's cool that i really like how you mentioned that and honestly that that caught me off guard but it, it, i understand it because you're saying mm -hmm. like you don't do it for any type of money even though i mean shoot i wanted to place an order and and it's cool but let's talk about that because one we, like we've been talking about so many things on this podcast from literally like we, we've gone deep we've had people you know shed tears of, of joy shed tears of of inspiration um talk about like how we can just the festival etiquette treating each other better you know certain things like not just going up to someone you don't know and, and if a stranger tries to grab you or, or do something and 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 another another area of um <clears throat> topic to, of discussion is this whole thing about candy and how it's just representing the culture. Some people are like, well, I sell it. And there are some people that are selling it and they have full merch and, and I get it. And I think that all of it adds to the culture, right? Because if someone's selling it, it might get into the hands of somebody else and then they share it with someone. And then that person's like, oh, where'd you get that? And it's like, I got it from here and I wear it at festivals. And they might make that person be like, oh, well, I want to go to a festival and then get involved. But then on the flip side, you just said it. It's, it's almost like, energy that can't be bought as well like this is gifted this is me giving you something that this is a representation of something that you can't even see you know what i mean and that if that even makes sense so talk about that and how it is a little controversial within even within the the candy trading community mm -hmm. um yeah it is controversial because uh I've actually i mean it all depends on your intention at the end of the day you know, I can see where someone like, oh, they asked me, oh, you know, I'll, someone asked me like, oh, I want to, um, I want to buy an Elenium mask and I want to give it to my friend for her birthday because she loves Elenium, you know, and stuff like that. Stuff like that, I think is great. You know, they don't know how to make it. So they want to, but they want to gift it, mm -hmm. which I, which I think is, you know, good. But it's a, it's also controversial because uh, some people feel like um, candy is supposed to come from you. And it's supposed to, it's kind of, it's like a little token of yourself to someone else. So if you, some people feel like if you don't make that, then it doesn't, you know, it's not as like important or doesn't count, which is not, not like completely the, um, the situation every time. Yeah. Everyone has their own, like you said, it's, it's, it really is the intention, but 
definitely could respect everyone's view on it, you know, and that's, and that's the thing uh, with the festival community is like, it's okay to have some, some different views and, 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 mm-hmm. and on things. But, you know, if, the, if you see this person smiling, having a great time, enjoying their experience, I don't care if they bought the, the thing, it was gifted to them. It, I'm glad to see that they're having a good time. You know what I mean? And, um, but I can understand it within the culture. And it, it, that's all we're asking is, hey, guys, because you'll have the hip hop festival and then EDM. And then they're like, oh, well, hip hop is better. Oh, EDM. Just understand that it's all music. And if it helps people get through life, certain scenarios, if it resonates with you, we've all had that. We've all gone through it where we're walking from one stage to another stage. You hear the roar of the crowd. You hear something going on at this other place. And you're like, what's going on over there? And you have to check it out. Like, so it's just being open and understanding that if someone were to tell me like, no, it should come directly from the heart. I'm not going to say they're wrong. I'm going to say, Hey, I respect what you're saying. You know what I mean? Um, it's all part of the culture. So it's because collectively we want to just be able to move forward and, and elevate and, Hey, I mean, you know, um, end of the day, it's beautiful uh, in all ways, shapes, and forms. And our goal as a community is just to embrace each other. So talk about how the festival community, you know, what, what makes you want to go back? Is it because of that embraceful environment? Oh, yeah, it's definitely, of course, the music. But uh, in the end of the day, it's the people. You know, it's, it's my friends. Like, you know, I miss everyone. I miss the energy. Like, even, like, with the streams, it's cool and all. And, you know, I'm talking with my friends. But it's that it's that crowd, you know. It's that, uh, it's that um, just being there and just being able to be yourself and express yourself and be with your friends that are also expressing themselves. And, you know, it's just, just definitely, like, the energy and the people. Like, I love meeting new people and talking to people and just connecting through candy. Yeah. And mm-hmm. candy's a great icebreaker too. Like, yeah, that's amazing candy. Boom. And then I swear, like so many times it's happened where you're just vibing with someone, they compliment it. And then you're just like, you know what? Boom. And you just gift it to them. And it, it literally makes their whole festival. Like I'm still talking about this and I always talk <laughs> about this. And, you know, it's just like, man, super cool. And, and who knows, like, I might be wearing it at a festival one day and, and I say, you know what, it's time. And then I pass it to the next person. And that, that's all part of it. Um, so Seven Lions, let's talk about Seven Lions because shout out okay. to Seven Lions. He might be watching this right now. Just kind of Ooh, <laughs> I'll go first though, actually, before, because I, you know, I'm not going to put you on the spot without putting myself on the spot. <laughs> um, I'm a huge Porter Robinson fan, love Porter Robinson. So shout out to Porter Robinson. Let that boy cook. That's a little insider we have. I, I got the opportunity to meet him. And hopefully one day he'll jump on this podcast. But his music really brought me into the culture. It brought me to my first festival. I actually thought Porter Robinson was like a group, <laughs> a group of like a band. I thought music festivals were like, just like a, a, you know, I used to be into like all types of music, like a rock concert. And it's like, all right, we're going to play this song. We play this song. It's like, all right, next song. But then. I went to that first festival and I was like, I'm here to see Porter. I'm here to see Odessa. I'm here to see these people. And then I walk in whole different world, 80,000, hundred thousand people there. You feel the energy, you see the lights, you see the candy. And I'm like, Whoa. So talk about seven lions and how, you know, for me, Porter Robinson has that embedded in, in, in my love for festivals. When I, that energy talk about how seven lions has done that for you. Um, well, Seven Lions, I think just like anyone's favorite DJ has, you know, helped me through a lot of, a lot of hard stuff, you know, um, he, you know, he's inspired by a lot of my candy, you know, I have a bunch of Seven Lions candy all over my wall, um, but, uh, I think the, you know, my friends, like, a lot of my friends that make candy, they love Seven Lions, too, I think we can bond over that really awesome, because we all make really awesome, like, Seven Lions candy, um, you know, I listen to a bunch of Seven Lion sets when I'm making candy, you know, it's just, he's just like a really big inspiration of mine, you know, I go to any one of his shows that I can when he's in the area, obviously right now, would have been seeing him at, you know, Beyond and stuff, but, yeah. um, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and what about, um, Dream State, because I feel like that Dream State is something that mm-hmm. I've heard so much about, and I don't even know how I haven't gone, every year I tell my fiance, I'm like, we're going this year, we're going this year, and then, something happens and I'm not able to go, but I know so many people that like, they swear by dream state. They're like, that is the festival, whether it's the NorCal or the SoCal one. 
and talk about dream state because it's, it's it also looks like it has inspired you oh yeah i uh, love dream state my favorite festival like i said um me and uh me and a, a couple friends actually hosted a candy meetup um the last two two dream states i think but uh i you know energy is good at all festivals and all festivals are fun and but i don't think i'll ever go to a festival where it's vibes are like dream state like i feel like everything everyone's like more accepting like you know sometimes candy is kind of looked down upon but there you can like really be yourself and everyone's just like just just loves it you know i feel like there's more like candy kids there too that, that kind of music definitely draws like like really good vibes awesome and talk mm -hmm. about the candy meetup what's a candy meetup what happens there uh, well, basically, like, uh, you can, uh, you know, put together a candy meetup, you can host a candy meetup. Uh, I've done one at, uh, me and uh, a friend, DJ Harpy, uh, we did one at Escape, and then uh, we did one at uh, Dream State, and then me and uh, my best friend, Kimmy, Princess Routine on Instagram, uh, we did one uh, at Dream State list last year. Uh, basically, you know, you put out a flyer, like, hey, you know, candy kids, anyone want to drink candy, just have good vibes. Uh, you invite them. Um, usually our location is by the pond, and us. So yeah. right on the grass area, and you know, I usually have a totem. I make totems too, and I, you know, the, you know, you can you can find this. You can spot a bunch of candy kids, you know, with like a bunch of light up stuff, you know. So you go and you just meet up you, uh, at the time, and you know, sometimes you have set trades, like like oh hey, you like you message someone like oh mate, you want to trade, you know, oh I'll be the candy meetup, I'll see you there, and you know, you you trade your set up trades, or you meet people that you haven't met before, and you know, you kind of uh, usually make a candy like pre made ready to trade. So when you're there, like, oh, you want to trade, you just trade a single or something, stuff like that. So just a bunch of candy kids, a bunch of good people come together. It's really fun. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> um, let's, let's talk about, just get into story time because I just, I feel like even just looking at your candies, it, it gets to be into that mode where it's just like, it's super just, it just, there's a fun, fun, loving part about it. So could you, if you don't mind sharing a story, a candy story, whether you know, you traded and it just still to this day, thinking about it warms, warms your heart. Cause I feel like that, you know, that's the essence of, of this candy and it'd be great to hear a story. Okay. Oh, so many. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to think of like, kind of like a non, like non-planned one. Cause those are always like the best. Sometimes, you know, when you have like a piece with you that, you know, was like super special and you think you're never going to give it away and then you meet the right person. So, um, probably there's a couple that come to mind but probably yeah. one that um it's it was, it was probably we are energy i don't i think it was 2018 um yeah so 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 basically we're, we're in the crowd and um oh how was it uh i i started talking to this girl she's kind of next to me and i don't know how we started talking and um she was saying um i don't know how we started talking about seven lines <laughs> sometimes somehow we started talking about seven lions i didn't have i don't think i had any merch on or anything i had a i had a seven lions um led galaxy candy mask in my bag though um and i don't know somehow we started talking and we started saying how ocean at the time was our favorite song mm -hmm. and i don't know just like the vibes i got from her, her name's um uh yari hi yari <laughs> and um I don't know sometimes you just connect with someone in such like a like a certain way you just like you just feel the need to like just give you know as candy kids you want to you want to give some a part of you and um you know just like oh you know what oh man i'm gonna do it i'm just gonna do it so i, 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 I take it and then she goes, you know we go to trade and um yeah and i give her the mask and she's all happy and i'm all happy and i'm just like oh <laughs> it was great um that that same night too i met one of my really good friends um Jenny too. Um, I, I um I didn't have much candy with me, but I wanted to give her something so bad. Um, I just had gotten the spirit hood, and I ha I had a spirit hood with me, and then she gave me. Uh, so I traded her my spirit hood. Like I was just like, yo, I just want to give you something, you know. <laughs> I, I traded her my spirit hood, and uh, she traded me like the first cup she's ever made, and and the same night that I met uh, Yari and Jenny. I think mean, just that that night sticks out to me a lot because they're so both super awesome. I'm, I'm close with Jenny, and they're just just great people like all of my like all of my close friends and like my best friends like i've met through candy i've met through instagram through the community that we've made and i think that's really cool like just like you never knew like through a couple like little, little beads that you would meet like lifelong friends exactly exactly and, and thanks for sharing that because 
And shout out to your friends. You said Yai and Jenny? Shout and out. Jenny, yeah. Shout out to them. <laughs> and that's the essence of music festivals. You go there, and yeah, you have certain expectations, who you're going to see, and sometimes you'll, you'll meet up, you know, go with, with your squad. But then you end up meeting people and building relationships that extend beyond the festival. Like, I literally met my fiance at a music festival, and I had no intention. I went to this music festival just focus on the music. I'm going to go to music. I'm going to have a good time, but I want to see this artist, this artist. I'm going to go use the restroom. I hear like my favorite song coming from like a far stage. I'm like, oh, forget the restroom. I need to go dance at the end of this song. <laughs> I run over there, run over there. I get there. And then I don't know what it was, but like, there was just like, she was just glowing and straight up. I was just like, she was by herself too. And I was by my, and I was just like, I'm just going to say hi to her, you know, in a non-threatening way. And it's just the vibes, the energy, and all of a sudden, here we are, four years later, and we're engaged. And just like you said, here you are, years later, and these are still close friends to you. And, you know, people, people obviously, they have this stigma about, oh, you're just going to the rave to, to get all crazy and turn up and do X, Y, and Z and not care about anything. But you're literally shedding light on the other side of it, which is like, now I'm going there to to be myself, to be accepted for whatever way, a non-judgment zone, and to share that energy. And, and it might be through, you know, just saying hi to someone, meeting people, um, spiritual connection. You said the spirit hoodie and, and, and everything. It's just like, that's the essence. And these are, you know, good people, good energy. Of course, there's always some stuff here going on here and there, but the general gist of music festivals is, is just, you know, pure bliss. Right. Just just saying like I, I'm saying it because I believe it. And um, obviously, you know, just looking at you, I could just tell like, oh, this person's about the movement. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So kind of what's next? Just wrapping things up, shed some positive energy. Um, what do you believe the future of music festivals holds and how can we all, like I said, continue to to, to just feel good about moving to the future? I mean, sure, there are little things that are going to change, but. Talk about what you see for the future and how, you know, you're looking forward to getting back out there and trading and how we can all just uh, keep that positive mindset. Yeah, so I think things are going to be great. I think we're all itching to go back to, you know, uh, uh, festival season. Um, I think we're all going to look at it differently. You know, we're all going to be a lot happier that we're going to be able to see each other because probably as you, you know, our Ray fam is far away, you know far away and um you know um i think it's important to be just uh, accepting of everything accepting you know what happens is gonna happen and in our community it's i think for me it's very important to be accepting because as a candy kid you do get you know kind of those looks sometimes and kind of like people at raves don't have the best intentions so i think it's, it's important to go back in in the mindset like you know we're we're all here we all we're all different in our different ways but we're all a big family and we're all here for the same reason we love we love music and we love our people and um it's just super important to stay positive in that aspect and just be accepting awesome beautifully mm -hmm. said and uh, you know what how, how can we support you even if someone's watching this and a fellow rave or fellow candy kid just wants to reach out or stay connected with you because they're moved by this and, and, and i'm i'm already moved by this because i really appreciate you sharing your stories um where can we find you uh to show our, our appreciation and gratitude yeah so i'm just on uh, instagram really uh i'm just candy addict on instagram you, know, you just send me a message or anything you know um yeah, i love talking to new people and anyone you know that you know, ever, you know, as a question or anything, I usually just guide them usually to my link because it's usually about the lights and everything. People want to like make, improve their candy, improve their, um, you know, their creations and all that. So just, you know, I love seeing people like comment positive things and just showing love, showing love to their friends and just, uh, you know, we, we love seeing new, new candy kids, new art, you know, it's just like something really cool to see. So just Instagram, I'll be <laughs> candy addict on Instagram. There it is, at K-A-N-D-I-A-D-D-I-C-T, at Candy Attic. Hit her up. All right, you guys, this was so much fun. Uh, I'm decked out. I'm going to keep these on for a little bit, keep the vibes thank going. You. And uh, thank you so much, Erica. Bestie Files, my name is Desmond Berenstain. 
to everybody watching, peace, love, unity, and respect. Signing out. See you guys next time.